like what you see, don't forget to smash that like button, share it, or subscribe. For all the latest Atlas info, sign up for our newsletter, shop.atlasrr.com. And don't forget to follow us on social media on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. And most importantly, enjoy the show. All righty. Welcome, Atlas fans, model railroaders of all creatures, great and small, all that stuff. My name is Andy Edelman, and I am here with Matt Masikas and Ross Medine, and we're going to open up uh, the 2024 April O-Gage catalog. It's brand new. It's going to get released online tonight. Is that right, guys? That's correct. That's right. All right. So you'll be able to follow right along with us. If you so choose, just go to shopatlas.com and uh, atlasrr.com, right? And uh, you can download the PDF and follow along, or you can just watch us. Uh, shout out questions if you have them. Ross will try to field those. And um, Matt and I will try to go through and answer them as best as we can. It's an exciting catalog. There's a brand new um, kind of reintroduction of a, a past classic uh, uh, category for Atlas that's in this book. And uh, we're really excited about that. It'll, uh, it'll be a great product. I think it'll be the start of many more going down the road. So we're looking forward to showing you that and taking questions on that as it goes along. Uh, for those of you who like hard copies and who doesn't, I mean, it seems like nobody does that anymore, uh, but you can pick up one of these books um, at uh, a couple of train shows over the next few weeks. Next week, uh, Atlas will be uh, exhibiting at the um, Train Collectors Association meet in York, Pennsylvania. Uh, that's a twice uh, a year meet uh, that Atlas has been going to over the years. And really, just a couple manufacturers go now, the bigger guys. Um, oh, we're one of the bigger guys, but we still go. We're not going to have a huge presence, but it'll be great for showing folks uh, the new book, answering questions and whatnot. So we're looking forward to that. Um, so you can come there. Uh, it is open to the public. If you're not a TCA member, once you uh, come in on a Friday, you can't come Thursday. That's uh, only open to TCA members. But Friday and Saturday, it is open to the general public. You can get your tickets on site at the York Fairground. So if you're coming by, we're looking forward to seeing you. And then the following week, We'll be up at um, Springfield, Massachusetts at the um, Big E, and that's the, um, uh, the big fairgrounds there in uh, Springfield, and uh, that's the East Coast Large Scale Show. That's a show been around for a couple of years now. It's pretty big, uh, and they do all scales, and that's why we're going to be there. So if you can't get to York, uh, Pennsylvania next week, then head on up to uh, Springfield, Massachusetts and see us there. So we're looking forward to that. Get your copy. And again, if you can want to follow along or download that PDF, you can certainly do that. Um, my, my team has worked a lot with Atlas over the last couple of years, and uh, we're super excited about this book. Um, guys, uh, we can jump right into it unless you guys want to shout out anything that uh, I have overlooked. Oh, you forgot to mention it's going to be you and Ross at York. Well, yeah, Small it will be. Pieces. That's great. Right. Following oh, Andy, and you know, you can influx the amount of people going by just well that's true yeah i suppose that it's that'll like, be my to be electric yeah electric. i think i've missed two yorks since 1986 uh not including the covid years so that's a lot and um it, i always like going there. with somebody new ross has been there once before right ross that's right so, yeah it's good to torture them with um <laughs> some of the activities at york um or perhaps i'll just behave but anyway, I'll be there. And then uh, who's going to be up in, in uh, Massachusetts? Ross, you and anybody else? We have Drew, Bill, and uh, Scott. And I have Scott's got a cult-like following. So Yes, he does. He does. <laughs> so he's, you're going to have a bigger crowd up there. And uh, I, I'm looking forward to hearing about that show because I've, I've heard good things about it. It's, it's not as big as the regular Springfield show in January, but it's definitely growing and the guy that runs that outfit does a really good job um, and really stretching it out to get more and more people there. And train shows are really kind of coming back now. So uh, it's good to get out and see the product, touch it, feel it, smell it, whatever. Um, and you'll be able to do that. And uh, you won't see everything that's in this new catalog at that show, but you'll see that new item and you'll be super, super stoked, I think. Yeah. All right. No shortage of uh, 
items for the booth space. So oh, we had to get bigger cars just to make sure we got everything. So <laughs> well, yeah. that's that's always good, you know. Just don't break down. I I came back from uh, Springfield one year, January, uh, cold on I ninety five, and um, trailer uh, tire went flat. So it was, that was back when we used to drive back that night after the show. We couldn't do it after that particular. Yeah. trip and uh, the guy I was with we looked at each other and we both kind of nodded and were pretty certain that we were going to die on the side of i-95 in that tire so be careful getting up there but <laughs> it can be tricky okay uh so uh what i've got here is uh, kind of a follow along uh with the catalog so if you didn't download it uh you'll be able to watch this and we'll uh we'll jump in and out as we uh as we come across new subjects. So bear with us as we go and uh, let's see what we got. So there's the cover of the shot of the catalog and uh, we're just gonna kind of go right through that because I don't wanna talk about that cover shot just yet. And um, what we've got up first are the uh, P42 Genesis. So this is a return uh, product from in, uh, from Atlas and um, got, got some great new schemes. Uh, Matt, go ahead and start chatting oh, about these, and I'll just turn this on and off. The brand new Phase Seven scheme, which should be a huge hit. This is uh, the new uh, scheme Amtrak has adopted, their latest and greatest. And uh, Amtrak was kind enough to provide us with uh, paint diagrams before these locomotives were even painted. So we have. Road number is 174, which is out on the rails right now. And then 82, I believe, is finishing up in the paint shop, but it will receive this paint scheme as well. And it's 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 a beautiful paint scheme. It's it's a lot, you know, before it was just silver and some dark blue, but now it, it really reflects America. It's you think of the flag when you see this, and it's very really, eccentric. Yes, very eccentric. Lockout, like it's just it looks like a waving flag. It's, it's great. Yeah, it's really cool. That's cool. All right, next up. Um, next up, we got, uh, I believe, NJ Transit. NJ yep. Transit, yes, indeed. So NJ Transit had P40s for, uh, I want to say, like three to four years. And they ran on their Atlantic City Express service. And, you know, that service didn't work out. So New Jersey Transit got rid of them after that. But any New Jersey Transit fan will want that. And there's a... <laughs> the MTA slash Metro North Conrail Heritage Unit. So Metro North is doing something really cool. They're uh they're doing heritage units based on their New Haven FL9 diesel electric locomotives, which uh they, they operated on both on much like these uh these are P32 well P40 these P32s actually based with the third rail pickup. And they run the same way the FL9s do where they're half diesel and half electric pickup. And uh, Metro North did these great new heritage schemes on their uh, P32s, which is our P42 body. So they're picking up on the heritage theme that other railroads have uh, employed over the last 10 years or so. They are. Yeah, so pretty cool. And there's more than one from them, right? There is. And uh, they, they keep pumping them out every now and then. So this one is uh, the Metro North MTA heritage. It's actually their... This was their 1980s, 1990s uh, paint scheme, and they uh, they're giving themselves their own little. I want to call it a throwback scheme, not a heritage scheme, because it is yeah. it's MTA after all. Right. Now, what is that called? The beach ball scheme? Is that what they call it? Yeah, yeah, with the big uh, yeah, well the stripes, and then you got the the meatball with the M in it. <laughs> uh, Self-explanatory nickname. <laughs> But these are a great match for the Comet cars that actually just came in. Our warehouse is overflowing with Comet cars right now. Wow, those are beautiful cars. So New York Central, another commemorative, right? Yeah, that's correct. Another commemorative. Uh, this ran on the lot. So all these paint schemes were seen on uh, the east of the Hudson line that goes up to Albany, um, Poughkeepsie, all that service. And uh, really, really cool paint schemes. It's nice little, like, just token to their past. The New York Central is sharp. You know, you're going to get New York Central guys that want this, and you're going to get Metro North guys that want this. Yeah, I think so. I think so. All right. So um, that's going to jump us up to the, the, the new item, I believe. Let's uh -huh. see here. And um, 
Uh, there's a feature list, which um, you'll see in the catalog as well. Well, anybody who bought our last production knows that, you know, yep. they look great. And we two railed it. So two rail guys or three rail guys that want the, the fixed pilots. If you're not a fan of you can order the two rail and then add the wheel sets yourself. And you got a sharp looking locomotive. Yeah, that was something that MTH never did with that model. and caught a lot of grief about it. So it's great that you guys did that. And it's great that Atlas continues the, the two rail O scale theme of uh, the product line. Um, it's been dallied about from different manufacturers but atlas has been the best out of all of them uh for maintaining that allegiance to that that market it's a dedicated market not a huge market but no. dedicated and they should you guys should be commended for keeping that going yeah, yeah. fixed uh, fixed wheel set or is it uh, scale wheel sets and fixed pilots right yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. looks sharp yeah. we're seeing more three-year-old guys that just like to add rollers to them and you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. A lot of the guys do that. They they like that fixed pilot look, so it makes a big deal. Okay, so here we go. Uh, brand new, well, reintroduction of an old category back into the Atlas lineup. The first diecast steam engine to show up um, in the uh, Atlas uh, catalog now since what two thousand eight? Yeah, so. yeah, no, and everybody's been clamoring for steam for years and years and years and now we're comfortable enough to put our toes back in the steam market and uh this is actually the weaver 280 that we acquired many years ago and we've made some much needed upgrades to it and it's it's really we later on we'll show you guys a sample and it's pretty incredible now this engine has the distinction of being the first atlas premier engine that's not an XMTH tooling with the proto sound, correct? That's, That's correct. right. So right. it'll be like an MTH diecast steam engine with proto sound three and synchronized puffing smoke, LED lighting, uh, the speed control, all the stuff that people have grown accustomed to with the MTH uh, proto sound two, proto sound three lineup over since the mid nineties. And uh, now it's uh, in an Atlas uh, box and uh, super, super excited about this. Yeah. And it, that's you know, just like half the features, you know, they got the working fire box and everything and it's just super sharp. Very sharp. Andrew. We could go through the paint schemes before we uh, tease these guys. with. Sure. So mm -hmm. you got six road names, eight road names. I can't remember. Let's see. Six, six, I think it's six, right? Yeah. So, C and W. Yeah, Chicago Northwestern uh, started off. Uh, I mean, it looks amazing. You love the Herald on it, right? I mean, that's yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> Another yeah. bread and butter. Boston and Maine, personal favorite. I mean, who doesn't like Boston and Maine? Yeah, I hope and, uh, two, two cab numbers, right? Yep, each one has yep. two cab numbers. So, Ross, is it correct that there's a Boston and Maine two eight zero preserved up in? Conway? There's a main a central. Okay. But there's Boston and Maine engines out there as well. I mean, the 280 is a pretty plentiful engine back in the day, but that led to it being preserved in, you know, many different facets and paint schemes all over the nation. So this is definitely the right engine at the right time, especially for us to dip our toe back in. Absolutely. I'm moving right along. Uh, Western Maryland, personal favorite, uh, screaming fireball scheme. Black and yellow, got the maroon roof. Yeah, the Cost. fireballs always did well, and uh, they're, they're super attractive looking. Says yeah. the resident Marylander in yeah. the chat here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, pretty slick stuff. Yep, Western Maryland, big little railroad, much like ours. Second, yeah. second, yeah. second personal favorite here, the Southern 630. The engine that still runs today, which is another distinction in there, um, super popular engine. This is We had to do it. Now is that running an excursion thing? For yeah, no, Tennessee, yep. the uh, Tennessee Valley Rare Museum. Gotcha. And Southern has a little bit of a theme in the catalog this go around, so you'll see some other Southern items. Lots to match it to. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, heavy theme steam air catalog coming up for you guys. <laughs> well, a little bit, right? <laughs> yeah. But we gave a lot to our modern guys too. There you go. Yeah. Well, we got uh, the UP here. UP, yep. Market. And, yep, two road names or two uh, road covers numbers. Half, Union Pacific, yeah, half the country, easy. Got to do it. 
New York Central. And we wrap it up with New York Central. Now, which one's going to sell the best? <laughs> I don't know. My money's on 630. I don't know. What do you think, Matt? I think 630 is a pretty good bet with the, you know, one being out there and then just. A, it helps. Good. It helps when the one is out there. There's no question about that. Maybe but, Union Pacific, though. You never know. I was going to say it probably will. Yeah. I mean, I'd, I'd hope they all do. I mean, I have the sample here, right? So if you look, I mean, we got all this detail here, you know, like safety yeah. valve. We have the whistle, bell, stack. We have injector starter valves, check valves. I mean, this thing is incredible. And, Wait, and uh, a, lot of, a lot of the brass lost wax castings are add-ons, um, and uh, that really helps make the locomotive stand out. A lot of detail relief that, uh, you know, die-cast steam fans have really become accustomed to from the offerings from uh, MTH and Line L. And so uh, this model is doing an excellent job of uh, meeting that same level of detail. Um, so I, I think really people will be hard-pressed to, to find fault with it. Uh, it's going to be just like what they've been accustomed to over the years. So it should be pretty good. Yeah, yeah, I'll tell you what, I would have held it up longer, but the thing is so heavy. Like, yeah, <laughs> it's a chunk yeah. Of the it, makes, boy, it makes a difference. Uh, there's your feature list, and we do talk about the train man 60-foot passenger cars, which are later in the book. Yeah. But before yeah. we get there, let's let's see what you got, Matt. You got, you got right. some video footage, right? I got some video, some behind-the-scenes action of this. What a mess we got here today. Somebody mischecked a truck somewhere, and now we've got two cars we can't find. Well, I'll we'll tell the yardmaster two cars are missing, and I'll see what he wants to do. Okay, I'll explain the situation to the engineer. I'll see you when you get back from the office. Yardmaster said to start switching on another track while they sort out the problem. It's going to be a long night. Well, I've lined the crossovers and I grabbed some lantern batteries. You'd better take those batteries with you back to the engine. Welcome back. I see you've got lantern batteries in your hand. Yep, change of plans. We're working on track four for now. Ugh, all right then. Let's get started. Ready when you are. All right. So that was pretty cool. Uh, and if those of you who listened to that, you may have recognized that sound set. That was an MTH sound set. I'm quite certain some of my employees, when I was there, I could hear their voices. So that was kind of cool. Um, and it'll be a whole new sound set when the engine is done, uh, uh, produced. Um, but the feature uh, of the sounds will be very similar in that you'll have uh, freight yard and conductor and engineer sound effects, obviously whistles and so forth. I think um, that was chuffing at two revolutions per wheel, uh, two puffs per wheel revolution. Um, should have been four, and that's adjustable um, through the DCS system, so that won't be a big deal. Um, at least it looked that way to me, but my eyes are getting bad, so who knows? Yeah, there's uh, still still some tweaking to do with the uh, pre-production here, but we absolutely. were just so excited to run it, right? The, the, the beauty is, is that you can put those sound sets in. Uh, you can put any sound set you want into that locomotive. It's no different than any other PS3 locomotive where you can put any kind of sound set you want into it. Um, to get the scale speed right, it needs to be optimized for the engine and the wheels. But 
that's what's really cool about the the DCS system and the PS3 system, and and now Atlas can do that with their Steam engine. So super slick, um, and uh, it'll be neat to get it uh, finalized, and you'll be able to demo that uh, as you go along. I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, additional videos coming from Atlas on uh, what this thing can do um, as those features are finalized and stuck in there. So it's gonna be fun. Yep. Well, I mean, we'll also have the pre-production sample at both train shows. Um, so you can kind of get up close and personal with it, you know, see what you like. Uh, give us suggestions. We're open to it. We'd love to hear your feedback on it. Yeah. And uh, I, I understand we're going to have a roller base, right? We're going to be able to demo it at the shows. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We got one fresh off the boat there, or right there off the is. container, I should say. And, uh, we'll, uh, we'll have a tablet at, I don't know what you're going to do up at Springfield, but in, um, in York, we'll have a tablet that you can come up and run that engine. Because it's on a roller base, we won't have to worry about you running it off the layout. Uh, that's happened before, and it's not a pretty sight. So it'll be nice that it'll be on the roller base. But you'll be able to get an idea how it works and so forth. Um, and, again, the suggestions are what we're always looking for. Yeah. So feel free to shout out if you see something that you, uh, you, you'd like changed. Maybe we can do it. Very nice. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So there you go. I'm going to jump back to the next item in the book, um, which, as we indicate here, the 60-foot passenger cars, I believe that's what's up next. And um, so these, these are train man cars, right, guys? Yes. Yep. And they're available in four or five different styles, um, baggage, RPO, combine, coach, observation. Um, everything sold individually, correct? Yep, that is also correct. Yep. So now we have different of, we have different ahead. styles. There's uh, baggages, there's RPOs, we have observations, um, coaches, depending on the consist that you're looking for. Right. They, so you'll, they, you'll they be able to mine. build you'll be able to build a set out of uh, however you want to do it uh, for each road name, Boston and Maine here, uh, or any of the others, right? Yep, correct. And we have a, a plethora, of, you know, we have a very eclectic bunch of road names. We have Boston, Maine, Chicago, Northwestern, um, just for our guys in the Midwest there. And it looks super sharp and we're very happy with it. Yeah, good looking cars. Yeah, it's pretty slick. It's in a good bunch there. And they're scaled to the, was it 60 or 68 foot commuter cars? Uh, 60, I think. Yeah, they're little shorty overland cars. But uh, these are the perfect cars to go behind the uh, the 280, uh, we thought, you know, kind of a mixed traffic engine. Yeah, especially for local service. Oh, for sure. They're perfect for that. Yeah. <laughs> now, we do have Santa Fe as well, just for our Western guys out there. Um, this will go with any of your Santa Fe equipment. Uh, we just thought it was a good time to bring out the Santa Fe road name um, for these. And it does come with an observation. Uh, Western Maryland, it'll go with the 280. Um, we are very particular on the green for the Western Maryland. <laughs> yeah. And the illustrations, these are just illustrations too. So the greens will be more greeny. <laughs> now, my personal favorite, Conway Scenic. Love That's it. Car. Bread and butter. Love it. Yeah. And that car still exists? The Conway yeah, the, Scenic the, car, right? The Conway Scenic cars, uh, they are often seen on their valley train often behind a steam locomotive, uh, their XCNJ cars. Uh, these are similar, um, and we really just love the road name. We just wanted to get some representation for New England up there. <laughs> Very nice. All right. Next up, Train Man, GP15. GP15, this is a long requested train man locomotive like, you know everybody asks what are the atlas locomotives returning what are they, like you know everybody loves the scale and the fidelity of the atlas o diesels and we're working to bring them back we got more factory capacity we got just so much more going on than we did in years past with recent years past that we can produce these great atlas o locomotives again and the trainman line is beloved by a lot of people it's uh robust but it has the the scale, deep attention to detail that people are used to with Atlas products. And I, I really love this uh, Atlas O train man GP15. It's now, this uh, this train man, now the 280 had its distinction. Uh, this engine also has its distinction as well, Matt, as far as the sounds go, correct? That's correct. 
So it's got, well, it's going to have the, the Proto PS3 sound system in it for the first time. So that's huge. You know, this, this is a, the first Atlas O locomotive receiving PS3. So it's, it's re revolutionary in that regard. It's, um, so you get people that can enjoy operating this on their DCS system, and then people who want to operate it on their DCC system can also operate it. It's uh, really nice that we can offer these with DCS inside them. Yeah, it's really helping, uh, I think, spread that uh, throughout your product line now. And people have certainly asked for it, or, excuse me, asked for it. So that's encouraging. You're also doing this in both two and three rails. Is that correct? That's correct. Yeah. So again, kudos to Atlas for continuing the two rail. So yeah. we've got Conrail and what else? Conrail, what's next in line? I, don't, I think it's York. G oh, uh, G yeah. yeah. Leaser that anybody can use anywhere. These are seen across the country. So you have a little siding, you want, you know, say your industry leased this locomotive. It's very believable. These are so common, these GMTX locomotives. So how come the side of the engine says GATX locomotive group? So that's General American, and then you got General Motor. It's it's all it's uh kind of like monopoly rules. So the company name is GATX, but their locomotive division, they call GMTX. So just to confuse people. Pretty much. Pretty yeah. Much. yeah. <laughs> okay. Makes sense to me. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Mopac, I believe, is next. There's Mopac. Mopac had the Mopac and Conrail had the largest fleet of uh, GP15s, and we're representing both of them. <laughs> we have to. <laughs> Mopac had an insane amount of these. Now here's my favorite. This is uh, also my favorite of the run because when we go attend the TCA uh, York show, we like to sit in the parking lot and drink our uh, adult beverages and watch the York Rail pass by, and, and we watch it all night long, baby. <laughs> <laughs> that, well, maybe was, not all night long. Yeah, enough to see one right? trip up and one trip back, yeah. right? Yeah. So if you're attending the York show yearly, I think you got to have this. It's uh it's just iconic and these have been in new york every i would i do the york show for three years or something now and i've seen them every time every time yep 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 right for sure. it was the next logical choice since we did a york rail box car right that's <laughs> correct yeah it matches your york rail box car from the last catalog csx everybody on the east coast loves csx it's now they're from, you know, they acquired Pan Am Southern. So now they're from Massachusetts or maybe, I think, Maine down to Florida. So, wow. All East Coast is represented now, CSX. Or by Norfolk Southern. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Ironically, that's next. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect fit. Norfolk Southern, they're a little bit more East West than CSX, but, well, CSX gets out there too. Norfolk Southern, uh, very common on the East Coast. Yeah. Oh, shocker. You, Union Pacific to finish out the modern railroads. Got to have UP. Got it's to. Union Pacific, and that's with the yellow sill stripe. That's the most recent version of these. These road numbers in particular are in the Chicagoland area. So it's, uh, you know, Illinois, and they bump up to Wisconsin. They're all over the place. So nice units. Yeah, I'm, I'm All right. Now we'll jump back to the Premier O line and the return of a caboose. And there we go. So the Northeast caboose is one of my favorite cabooses. Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about these road names? Well, we got the Boston and Maine Minuteman logo on that one. And uh, it's a good fit for the Boston and Maine 280. Um, matches the arrow. See what we did there? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so, if you have like a lot of this is going to be themed to matching the 280. Right. So, people can do passenger service with their 280 or they can select. The upcoming freight cars to match the 280 and this would be perfect for a freight variation 
No, nope, there you go. Chicago Northwestern. See and done yet. The Chicago Northwestern. That's a transition era paint scheme. Along with uh, New York Central. Uh, Pittsburgh and Lake Erie sub reporting marks. And the now, this is an interesting one. Yeah. Savannah and Atlanta, which it says Southern down there as item number, you know, name, but. Savannah, it's a subsidiary of the Southern Railroad, and it's a cool match for the 280. And it's more colorful than a normal, uh, normal Southern caboose, which is just plain red. It is, and I don't know. Has Atlas done any Southern in Atlanta? Uh, Savannah. Atlas before? Yeah. Yeah. What's that? Savannah in Atlanta. I mean, Savannah. I'm sorry. Um, no, I don't think we ever offered maybe a boxcar once before. Yeah, but... I, I can't remember anybody doing one. Yeah, nothing major. I don't. I don't right. think. And it, it is a popular little railroad. There's lots and lots of books on the Savannah and Atlanta. So it's it's kind of neat to be seen offered. Yeah. What else do we have here? Oh, UP. <laughs> and that's uh, very much steam era with the red trucks. Yeah, with the red trucks for sure. Yep. Western Maryland. It's a good transition era. So you can be <laughs> with your GP7s or whatever you want to do. Or your 280. You exactly. <laughs> Put your GP7 behind your 280. You could. <laughs> <How'd> you <feel? laughs> All right. Next up, a return, another return of Premier uh, to the Atlas line. Um, and uh, interesting that this has already come back. Um, goes to show you how uh, many people like these cars because MTH never did the variety that you guys seem to be working oh, yeah. on. Dealers can't keep these in stock when we make these. So it gives us the privilege of running them closer together, but it's, you know, it's got to, there's so many uh, road names and maybe we're a little bit more liberal with our paint scheme selections, but it's fun to represent everybody on these. I was going to say nothing wrong with that. And it, if, if, a uh, railroad has a following they typically will sell regardless of whether some artistic license has been yeah introduced yeah the, the model itself represents the canadian ones very well like the cp one is very prototypical looking the american ones are a little bit longer but they still fit the bill like jesse jesse's a huge following and for those of you who have never seen one of these in person those wings fold out um they they're not auto they're not uh motorized or anything they're mechanical but you can fold them out and uh the coupler can be removed in the front if you don't want it sitting there but it's nice to to have it otherwise you got to pull it backwards yeah they're, they're operating wings Seems yeah with, uh, usually they have a person up in the top there manning it and it's it's quite the operation when you see them in service it's pretty yeah. neat I'm sure it's scary up there. Flying. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> I, w I was reading about some of the racket that goes on too. That, that they're awfully loud with the snow hitting them and so forth. Um, the light up there lights up, and I think there's a cab interior light as well. I believe you are correct. Believe so. Working cab interior. Pan Am goes with the CSX acquisition. Lots of them for our northeastern friends. Pansy. I think MTH did Pensy, but not with the black roof on. Not with the black roof. That's right. And then Rock Island. Rock Island, another huge following. We now love our Rock Island. These are the only items in the book, I believe, that are offered exclusively in three rail. In this book, correct. Yep. Yep. And that's that's just because of the truck design. You'd have to too much yeah. work. Yeah. Yeah. And adding and the coupler in the front as well, it'd be a little yep. messy. You'd have a big gaping hole there. Yeah. All right, returning back to well, the first time in the book, the master line, and um, that'll take us to a, a pretty, pretty much one of the car types that Atlas is just famous for. Yeah, reefers. We're <laughs> well known for our reefers. <laughs> well, you, you should you should be well known. You've done magnificent work with reefer cars yeah. over the years. Uh, leader, leader of the industry for sure when it comes to reefers. Yeah, yeah we're proud of them. 
everybody begs for re re uh, re releases. I'm not good with my R's. <laughs> but uh, there's two types of reefers in this run, right? Is, is there both? Uh, Still a 40 foot, but I think the trim level is different, right? I believe, yeah, we have multiple variations on our 40 foot wood reefer. So this is one with the ladders. Yeah, oh, it's it's insane how many vary. Yeah, you can see it has ladders and then it has grab irons. Ladder, but it's grab irons. Yeah. Oh, these are these are Scott's babies. Yeah, they are. <laughs> Scott would be talking up a storm right now about these <laughs> signals and reefers. He's got it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we have a good amount of road names in here. The Omaha Cold Story is awesome. It is. We like it colorful. That's what we like. I like seeing old school billboard styles. Right. 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 Yeah, the poultry, the chicken, egg, whatever, you know, it's, it's everything that ends up on your table. Yep, for sure. That's a cool one. That is a cool one. I think that's Scott's favorite. He just goes on and on about it. South <laughs> Iowa Co-op Creameries. Is that, is that, that, that's that one, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Super cool. And these are two and three rail. Yep. Um, two railers love them. We sell them below the two rail. Oh, I'm sure. All right, we've got two train man items left. And this car is uh, has an interesting name. <laughs> so it obviously has some history. Um, and I, I wrote it wrong there. It's not a 70 ton. It's a 52 and a half foot war gondola. So yep. what is a war gondola, Matt? It's a war emergency. So you can see that it has steel superstructure, but it has wood slots on the side to hold the commodity inside. So basically during World War II, all the steel was prioritized for the war effort so it was going towards aircraft tanks armored car anything military related so other industries especially the railroad industry a lot of rolling stock had to be um, made out of wood again even though they evolved past that earlier on they resorted back to wood designs with steel superstructure to uh, build new cars during the war effort so that's where it gets the uh, Usually we call them war emergency gondolas or war emergency boxcars or war emergency coal hopper. Anything that has a steel superstructure and mostly a wood body would be your, uh, your war error. So really it was just a fancy marketing term by the car manufacturers to uh, <laughs> gloss over the fact that they were cheaper produced cars because they were made out of cheaper material or yeah. less durable material, wood in this case. As opposed to steel, is that is that where it's I'm? Like that exactly. And you can see it still has steel superstructure, which they couldn't make a wood gondola this long if it was all wood. Right. So it does need a little bit, but it's not as much as the full kit caboodle. It's just that right. skeleton is steel. Right, and the result of that is such a unique and distinctive look. I mean, you can't miss these. They're like. Incredible. <laughs> yeah, no, super yeah, cool looking car. Well, um, you know, they're still useful. People, they, they, railroads didn't just get rid of them. Right. Tricky to decorate. <laughs> yes, <laughs> for sure. <laughs> Custom painting one of these would not be fun. <laughs> not at all. But yeah, we have the quality. We got Rock Island. Redding. Now, the, Redding, the Redding is interesting, right? Like, that's kind of a what if, isn't it? Yeah. Do you remember Scott's backstory on that? It was they had a plan to do these, but they never actually yeah, did so they, had, they had them on order and then the war ended and the car manufacturer sent them completely steel condolas instead. So, so it's a funny like historical what if. There's actually paint diagrams of these cars. I was gonna right. say, were there paint diagrams? That that's yeah. pretty cool. Though. Yeah, yeah. They never got made because the war ended. Right. Yeah, that's pretty slick. And that's that was just, just writing in this group. That's a, that's that way. Everybody yep. else bought these. Everybody else is legit. Yep, everything else. And these are also an awesome addition to the 280 or your Steam Era layout. I mean, you got to have one. If you're if you're modeling that era, especially with Steam yeah. Transition Era, you're going to have one of these. 
especially a two eight. That's a two eight oh is a branch line war effort locomotive, you know. Yep. And there's two eight oh's the gondolas, there's tons of photos of them. <laughs> yeah. Totally cool car. Should do well with that. All right, our last train man car is coming up. And um this is uh, the 40 foot sliding door box car. Um, also available in two and three rail. And this one hasn't been produced for a little while. I think 2017 was the last time we received these at Atlas. Yeah, good while. So the first row name, Baltimore, Ohio. It's got the green light, you know, Sentinel service. It's just a really iconic scheme. Um, I've heard lots of requests to rerun this scheme. It was done the I believe on the first run, very first run of this boxcar. And uh, it's just probably the most iconic scheme we have to offer. Yeah, I, I like that scheme. I don't know, man. There's another scheme in here that's pretty uh, iconic. Well, you're a little biased. <laughs> very biased. <laughs> this field, this is cool. Black car. Um, it's got the return home marks on it. And EJ and E. That's another EJ pretty and e. Warming up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, Northampton <laughs> Bath. This is a New, New Jersey PA, a Pennsylvania guy favorite. So I don't think there's been a Northampton and Bath item produced in no scale yet. I, might I don't be. think so. Yeah, this yeah. is a short, short line. It's yeah. a Lehigh Valley subsidiary or like a predecessor or something? Yeah, or? sub railroad of the Lehigh Valley. Mm -hmm. So like, all they did was uh, grain and concrete. And when the grain went away, they just did concrete. So. These cars are often uh, all white and dusty from the concrete loads inside. And we're pleased our bosses let us do this. Yeah, they encouraged. <laughs> <laughs> a little bias ourselves for uh, well, the site. Understood. <laughs> cool looking, though. Yeah. Cool. Most people are like, that's a brown box car. What's the deal? Now, this is the car everybody needs, the main central. This that's is the iconic. inverse scheme. So there's not too many of these. Uh, usually they're green with a yellow door. This one is reversed and it's legit too. So it's pretty cool. We've made the green green body and yellow door before. So now if you have that one, you can buy the yellow body with green door. And they will. It'll look good together for sure. And yeah, Santa Fe. <laughs> Santa Fe just iconic, the super shock control scheme. Um, these are legit. They're rebuilt. I believe it was a BX, uh, I want to say 87 or something. It's Santa Fe gave them their own class, but they had the big 10 foot door and it looks just like this box car. And it's, it's a really good looking box. Like the paint scheme's great. Everybody loves this paint scheme. Yeah, it's a favorite. It's a favorite. So that's it for the rolling stock and locomotives. Um, there are a few other items in the back um, that uh, will come up here in a sec. Um, and you may want to chat a little bit about them. People are People are that. Yeah, so we're getting to the end. Oh, well, we got the rerunning um, the, the pedestrian the crosswalk. Cross, the crosswalk. So this is the second run of these? This yeah, is our second is. run of these. And they sold out immediately the first time. So please get your pre-orders in. It's really important. If you want it, please pre-order it because uh, we had a little extra stock last time, and they it just went so quick. And this goes for dealers too. If you if you think you're gonna order a lot, like have a lot of people excited, just order a little cushion yourself because uh, they come and go out of our warehouse so fast. So what we got red and what else? I think red, green, silver, black, and uh, is black the first time Atlas is doing that? Yeah, I think one so. of, yeah, one of them is the first time. Yeah. Um, I think it's black. Black, and black would be nice because, you know, you could make your own little billboard or something and tag it on there. Black, uh, exactly. the black looks last to the modern era, too. And a, and a popular request, we did put the dimensions of this. Um, so when you do add it to your layout, you'll know where it fits and what you can do and what you can't do. <laughs> you can plan accordingly. <laughs> same, same with the turntable. We got the dimensions on there for you, too. And, if you're not familiar with the Atlas O turntable, it's an it's an awesome turntable. Um, we have these currently in stock. It's, uh, it's real as it gets for an O scale turntable. Smooth operation, nice uh, bridge deck on there. 
just very realistic looking. It goes well with our Atlas O roundhouse as well. And then, uh, of course, we got track in here. Plenty of track. Ross, am I wrong if I say we have 99% of O scale track items in stock? You'd be correct. It is 99. It's a, it is a high number, popular request. We had to make sure we had everything in there. All um, right. Constantly replenish the track, constantly. Definitely build your layouts with o, Atlas O track. We have it in stock. It's readily available. You're not going to start building and run out. We have lots and lots, and our factories are clamoring to make more for us. We got yep, and we'll constantly in and out. That's all it does, in and out. <laughs> well oiled machine now. So please. <laughs> It's it's great track. It's robust. Or it's it's and it's good looking. And Nickel silver uh, indoor outdoor indoor outdoor as well UV proof. So that's that might be my summertime project. Doing a little two rail outside. Who knows? I might need a lot of uh, liquid encouragement to start that. But <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, man, that's you know, it's, it's a lot of courage you need to build that. I was gonna say, yeah, yeah, <laughs> but I, I want to do it. I always wanted to do it. As soon as I found out the track was UV proof, I was like, I'm sold. <laughs> and then on the other page, you see structures. Um, we have a special sale right now that's for dealers only, but there's in stock lists available for consumers as well to see everything in our warehouse. Dealers, please, uh. Please review this, the sale going on. Um, it's great. It works for us. Works for you. Lots of great items in stock. Uh, lots and lots of O scale structures we have in stock. Uh, the gas and go. The water tower. The water tower is a great. It looks like a finely detailed H O structure, just enlarged to O scale. And that's really what the Atlas O brand is about: is fine scale products, just larger. And we want to give love to our O-scalers because there's a lot of great O-scale products out there, but not all of them are detailed like the smaller scales. And we we do all that hard work and scaling and detail. Like, it's everything's a long and thoughtful process at Atlas. They put a lot of time into it. Um, you know, so our once in a century sale, we want to make sure the dealer and distributors are stocked up to make sure they have... Um, everything that you would need for your hobby needs, especially for model railroad. Yeah, so, so give that a uh, special, you know, if you're a dealer, give it a look or your consumer. We have a list available of in stock items on our website and you can approach your dealer and say, hey, Atlas has this in stock. Can you get it to me on next? Like we can get it to yep. you quick. And HO, O-Scale, you call us, we'll probably have it for you. Yes. And you also have your golden spike. So don't forget about that. Yeah. yeah. Spike Club. Beautiful uh, Van Van Camp Milk Company. Yeah, milk one milk. of Scott's again. I think it's one of his favorite schemes. The white, the red. It is awesome. It's just another one of those, uh, yeah, kind of, kind of things. <laughs> yeah, no, it's and I know people that join our Golden Spike Club just to get the reefer cars that we like. We like to mix it a little bit modern every once in a while, but mostly the Golden Spike offerings are reefer cars because there are collectors out there that just collect our O scale reefers. Like it's they'll have like Ross's display case of just our O scale reefers. So I you know many people that do that. And uh yeah. we have our pamphlet too. This is a way back one, but we yeah. you gotta have them all. <laughs> we have a little bit of extra time. So I just want to take like two, three minutes to to answer some of the the questions and comments on the side here. I know now, well, I, I did have a, I did have a question from long ago, but it's buried. Um, but there are comet cars that did just come in that match the P42, the P40. Um, yes, they just came in. Go to your favorite dealer, distributor, see who has one. They're definitely out there. Um, if you have any questions, you can always give us a call. Um, but they did just arrive. Now the yeah. New Jersey Transit ones are the ones that are still waiting. Correct? They shipped a little bit later. Right. So because we're hand in hand with New Jersey Transit, and we're not going to bring it in if uh, we don't get all those approvals. So told them, hold off, guys, and they'll be coming as soon. I did see a couple of people asked whether they can get a physical catalog, and the answer is yes. Um, <laughs> we still do it. Yep, yep. The Atlas still prints them, so you can pick them up at a couple of shows over the next two weeks. The York uh, Train Collectors Association show next week in York, Pennsylvania. Atlas will have a booth there. Ross and myself will be there. Come by, pick up a book. Uh, you do not have to be a TCA member, as I said at the outset. Um, the show is open to the public on Friday uh, and on Saturday. 
um, if you are a TCA member and you don't want to deal with the, the riffraff, then come Thursday uh, from noon to six and um, you can grab a catalog. And then the following week, um, the team will be up in Springfield, Massachusetts at the East Coast Large Scale Show. Um, and they'll have a bigger, little bit bigger display there. You'll be able to touch and feel all the products um, that Atlas has been doing of late. Uh, you'll be able to see the steam engine as well. Um, and then uh, I guess you mail some of these out to dealers and they can get them in the dealer store. Is that right? Yeah, we mail some copies out to dealers. And if you're a dealer watching this, please just request the hard copy of catalogs. If you, you know, we put them in with your order. It's no big deal. Okay, so we're looking forward to seeing folks at shows over the next couple of weeks. I think you had uh, one other thing, um, Matt. Oh, just I saw my buddy Chris uh, where's the dash nines. He can keep his eyes open. Maybe they'll, they'll be coming. And then uh, I see a lot of questions about the new ES44 schemes that have come out since we've like the CSX heritage units. I saw that pop up multiple times in the comments, and uh, we'll we'll be uh, definitely looking into those and. Hopefully, offering them soon. Now, do you have any updates on the uh, the fifty three foot containers? I know we have some questions on those as well. So, those from the last run are actually in our warehouse. We just received those customs, kept our container for a little while, but now we ironically have our container full of containers. So, <laughs> I love telling people that, it's like, oh, <laughs> containers, especially the look on customs face when they like open up and do their inspection. It's just little versions of what they're looking at gotta be funny but uh yeah no our container full of containers is here and um uh, those we ship it out with me it's our warehouse is so packed because comic cars came in that um the 53 foot well car articulated well car sets came at the same time as the containers this time which is awesome because guys who ordered the well cars have containers to put in them so not often that we can you know coordinate that but for this production you'll get your well cars and your containers hopefully within the same amount of time. Now we got a, we got a couple questions uh, just on the 280 and the Jeep 15. Now those will have proto sound. Um, will they be able to switch from two to three rail? Um, how are we going about that? So I believe I'll have my physical copy, but did we offer a DC two rail or DC three rail? Or just DS DCS throughout? There's a DCS three rail and two rail, and there's also the analog two rail. So the analog two rail, will you can put your own decoder in there, and it will have a speaker ready to go inside of it. Um, we're working on a mount with our supplier. So if you like soundtracks, you like ESU, you know, you could put it in your uh, analog two rail because those are the guys really that want to um, – mess with the different that's for, that's for the 15 right that's for the gp15 right yep so the two real guys that want like a you know they're not like uh they already have a, a layout full of soundtracks or esu they can put their own decoder in the, the analog version pretty easily i know this uh this steam engineer is kind of flooding the chat here i got a question from william davis uh, does this open the door to any other steam engines or anything like that in the future, you think? Possibly. I mean, we got we got a few in our uh, library of tools. And seeing how this does, uh, I think it does open the door for more to come. I know we're, we're pretty excited about it. I mean, I'm I'm super excited. <laughs> when I saw a lit firebox, I was like, oh, that's that's pretty awesome. Like, yeah, I'm full of diesel error, but I'm like, oh, all right, I can get into it. That. Andy, you heard it first. He's a diesel nerd. I heard him. <laughs> a little goober energy there. <laughs> now we might have a couple. Well, I probably have room for what? One more, you think? One more question? Yeah, you want to do one, two more, and then we'll go eat dinner and sure. <laughs> call it there. Let's see here. I, I'm, I'm seeing uh, the P42s there. A lot of people are excited. Does that open the door to any other scales with P42s, or we're just going to stay with uh, O scale? Probably just O scale for now. There's a lot of great. P42s in the HO and N market. Oh, you heard, heard it first. Just those scale. We love our O scale P42s. And we have the cars to match them as well. Again, they did just show up. Um, super important. Um, go to your favorite dealer. Definitely reach out there and they'll, they'll definitely get you accommodated. Um, now, the 
pre-order deadline for this. This is May 22nd, right? That's correct. I believe so. It's what it says on the on the cover there. So we make a may take a few extra after that, but no, it's uh, to May twenty second. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we're, we're glad you squeak in there. But definitely, You're please. Down, so. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, May twenty second. Please, please, please get your pre-orders into your favorite dealer. Um, get it in there by email, call. You can give us a call. We can definitely get you accommodated. Um, but we just want to make sure that everyone has the 280 or the freight cars they're looking for. for the All right. GP15. Well, I think that's a wrap on this one. And uh, hey, tomorrow I'll try to go in here and answer your questions we didn't get to. But that, that was exciting. It's a ton of fun uh, releasing something we haven't done in so long. Well, wait, wait till you start going to shows with it and getting the feedback from people. It, oh. when you have a steam engine at a booth, they always bring the crowds in. So you'll, you'll it's have Ross, fun with it. It's Ross it's will hate the smoke. I might get nose plugs or ear plugs. Well, let's to. see if the sound or the smoke bothers me first. <laughs> I was going to say, if you've got rollers on we'll, we'll program some yeah. kind of loop that just drives you crazy. Well, so, we're going to wear the rods out of this thing. We're just going to let go. it run all day long. <laughs> there you go. It's some bacon flavor, uh, bacon scented steam or something. <laughs> I know Billy likes his uh, what is it? I like Maple vanilla. Flavor. I like the vanilla one. Yeah, the vanilla is the least of the offenses. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> yeah. All right, guys. Well, appreciate you coming along with me, and uh, thanks everybody for tuning in. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at some of these shows. Um, keep the feedback coming to us. It's very important. Um, it really helps drive the product line thought, uh, direction, and uh, whatnot. So without the customer support, we wouldn't really know what we're doing. So we really appreciate that help and uh, keep it coming. Looking forward to seeing everybody down the road. Have a good night. All right. Good night, guys. See you later. <laughs>